One of the downsides of using silhouettes in a 3D model is that they only face forward in one direction. We can get past this if we download another script from the same website as our previous lesson. Scroll down to Face Camera and click to download. Extract it into your refs folder and let's drag it into Rhino to load it. This command, which you can engage by typing in Face Camera, rotates silhouettes on their z-axis to face whatever direction you have positioned within the viewport. This will come in handy as we export views from all different positions. Next, let's learn how to save views in Rhino so we can come back to them later. We can save any view by going to the down arrow on the viewport and selecting Set View, Named Views. This opens the Named Views panels where we can save our current viewport. We can also load views from another 3DM file here, which is useful if you've saved several versions and want to coordinate with the views between them. To get back to a view, either double click on it in the Named Views panel or return to the arrow, Set View, and select the view you want. The default projection mode in the perspective viewport is three-point perspective, which means that lines recede in three dimensions. To get a more realistic view, you can use 2D perspective, which corrects verticals. We can also check our camera lens length here in the properties panel. It's important to understand that our viewport is essentially our camera and how wide or zoomed in it is depends on this value. Angle lens might be around 21 to 24 millimeters. So when I set views, I try not to go any wider than this, unless I specifically need to panoramically capture a really wide angle. Alternatively, if you want to focus closely on something and build depth of field, a longer camera length of 35 to 50 millimeters works well. Eye level views work well, but there are a variety of drawings we might want to create. Drawings we might want to create. To create an axonometric view, go to set view, isometric, and select a direction here. This will set the model on a 30 degree angle with verticals perpendicular to the plane. This is one of the most used orthographic projections in design and can give an overview of the site and its individual components while still being an accurate measured drawing. Axos and exploded axos are something you'll use a lot, so saving out a few views here is a good idea. Cutting sections in Rhino couldn't be easier. There's a section command. First, I'm going to lay down some guidelines where I'd like to cut my sections. I'm going to place them in what I consider the more interesting topographical locations of this garden. Type in section and select the components you want to cut through. I recommend turning off people and trees, otherwise you'll get some funny random lines in the section cut. Now set the start and end point of each section. You can keep cutting until you've got all the desired sections. Press enter to complete the command. We see here that Rhino groups the output, which is one of the options within the command. At this point, you could simply copy these, rotate them around to the front view, and export as line work or an Illustrator file for further use. But there's a lot more we can do with sections. Let's copy our entire model by selecting it all, including trees and people, and using the gumball while holding down Alt. We'll use these section guides as cutting planes to subdivide the model. Turn off the trees and people again. We don't want to accidentally split them. Use EXT to extrude the curves and make sure both sides is selected. We want to ensure the cutting planes go through all the topography above and below the origin plane. Select the model and use SP for split. Select the cutting planes and press enter. Once complete, you'll need to ungroup the model if you have it grouped as I do, and then reselect the individual pieces and regroup it into chunks. Put the people and trees back on first. I recommend working in plan view and ghosted display mode so you can see all of the model components. G will group the objects. I'll hide each chunk as it's ready to make it easier to select and group the next chunk. Unhide all of the pieces and now we can move over into an isometric view. Using the gumball, pull the pieces apart. Our section cuts can be duplicated and moved to correspond to each piece. Now we can save this as an exploded axo. If you want to go further with this, we could select all of the trees, move them up, and then do a make 2D of both the model and tree separately to get an exploded axonometric in the vertical direction. What else could we do with this model? If we copy this broken up model down, we can rotate the pieces so they all face front. From there, we can export elevational information to use in our section backgrounds if we want. 
We could even duplicate each piece of the model and take views from both cuts to cover all the views. One command I use frequently to save up views from Rhino is View Capture to File. This allows us to select a resolution, quality, and image dimensions and save out to a few image file types. We can also make the background transparent if you want to add your own background sky in Photoshop. Make sure you save as a PNG if you want a transparent background. Perhaps we'd like to export a background for a rendered plan. Let's return to our saved plan view and see what we can do with it. In the render panel, we can adjust some of the settings here. We have the ability to set the quality and size, as well as select a lighting environment or use the sun for shading. You can set the sun to a specific date, time, and location, or use manual control to customize the shadows. This could be used for sun studies and to capture basic shadows for a rendered plan. It's not the most advanced rendering software, but it's good enough for basic operations. Again, we can use View Capture to File to save out JPEGs or PNGs, or you could click Render to let RhinoCycles complete the view. Remember to save it after it's finished. If we change this to the Future Landscapes Display Mode and turn off People and Trees, we could also export this view as a linework overlay. Alternatively, we could select the model and make 2D if we want control over the line weights themselves. We've made all of these 2D lines. What happens next? First, be aware that you'll probably have to do some editing of these lines within Rhino before you take them into CAD or Illustrator. Remember our basic drafting commands. Ungroup elements before editing, then use trim and extend where needed. Eliminate duplicates as much as possible. This process can be a bit time consuming, but if you model cleanly, hopefully it won't be too much of a chore. Once your line work is ready for export, simply select it all and choose File, Export Selected. I'm choosing to export as an Illustrator file. We have the option to set a scale, and I recommend you use something very straightforward like 1 to 100. In this case, that means 1 meter is equal to 1 centimeter. This will make it easier to resize an Illustrator later if you need to. For example, you could scale by half to get 1 to 200, or double the size to get 1 to 50. This series should have given you a great introduction to all of the most basic tools for drafting, modeling, and creating line work and basic graphics within Rhino. If you think I've missed anything or want more explanation about a particular method I've used, please email me directly with your feedback. General comments about the course are also welcome. See you in the next series.